It's the first day of Camp Spoopathon! <laughs> Welcome to my Camp Spoopathon vlog. Yeah, it's Camp Spoopathon week, hosted by Spoopy Hall. And in this readathon, we are at a summer camp trying to escape from a murderer. So along the way, we are reading books to get from Lake Death back to the cabin, all safe and sound. This happens to be one of my busiest weeks at work. Um, so I don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done this week but I'm going to try my best. Um, I'm wor basically working eight days in a row from today so day one is down. Thursday is my study day. If you've seen my vlogs before you know I have a day to study for my apprenticeship so I don't have to go into work which is good because that's the day of the cycling time trials in Wolverhampton so all the roads are closed so I literally would not even be able to get to the library. <laughs> so I'm studying from home that day but I still need to work on that day to get my assignment finished. I plan on reading three books this week. Um, I've only pledged to read two, which I think is the most doable for me, but we've got a bonus third one just in case. So the first book I've started with is Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Um, and I'm going to be using this for some of the prompts. I can't remember which ones off the top of my head at the moment. This, um, I'll read the blood to you. 16 year old Olivia Pryor is missing three things, a mother, a father and a voice. Her mother vanished all at once, her father by degrees and her voice was a thing she never had to start with. Her only companions are the ghouls she sees and her mother's journal which captured a mind in turmoil. Near the end of her time at Maryland School for Girls, Olivia receives a letter from an uncle she's never met, summoning her to his estate, Gallant. But when she arrives, she discovers that the letter was years late. Her uncle is dead and the estate is empty, save for her cousin Matthew and the servants. Olivia is permitted to remain, but must follow two rules. Don't go out after dusk and always stay on the right side of the crumbling wall. But Gallant is a house of secrets, a house sitting in lonely vigil, a place where the ghouls are powerful. As Olivia searches for answers about her family, her past, she discovers a dark reflection of everything she knew, an ancient realm where ghosts take form and a dark master sits waiting for her. So um, I'm currently on page 82 and I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It's a little bit weird um, in terms of the setting. I can't pinpoint if this is set in like the Victorian era or later or modern day. When Olivia was at her school like there was talk about matrons and the workhouse and all that jazz but then she went to Gallant and she was in a car with an engine so I'm not sure on the setting that's the only thing that's kind of bugging me at the moment that I can't pinpoint when this is meant to be set but other than that I'm really enjoying it I'm very intrigued with what's going to go on in the house and also I love the e Schwab's writing style it's kind of really mystical? I don't know what the word is. I don't know, I, I like the way that it, it flows. It's, it's very similar to how Adi LaRue was, which I, you know, I expect it's the same author. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. Um, I'm hoping to read a little bit more of it tonight. I'm watching Spoops, Ro and Beth's Patreon sprints this evening, because um, I was at work today, obviously couldn't join the public sprints. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do some more reading of that this evening. <laughs>
everybody. So um, I have a reading update for you. It is now Wednesday, day three of Camp Spoopathon and I've finished Gallon. Uh, I finished it last night and I rated it three stars. I'm sorry. It was just very mediocre for me. I felt like it had a really promising start and then I just really lost interest about halfway through and I just couldn't really figure out what kind of book it's trying to be. I couldn't tell if it was meant to be like horror or a thriller or a fantasy or like a historical fiction. Like it just felt like it was trying to do a lot of different things and it was failing at all of those. I really liked the setting and the concept behind the house and the shadow world but yeah three stars it was just okay. A little bit disappointing coming off the back of reading Adia LaRue but I will read more Schwab. I kind of didn't expect to be blown away by this because a lot of people haven't enjoyed it as much as her other books but yeah it was just okay. So this is what my Camp Spoopathon map is looking like. So I used Gallant for the prompts Ghostly and Read at Night. Also fulfilled the bonus prompts for Queer, set in the summer and recommended to you. So that means I have 125 points. That means that I have managed to defeat the first killer uh, and I am able to progress on in the map. So that's very good. I have also used it for the prompt on someone's worst list for Magical Readathon, and I have caught three fish for Polathon with this book as well. So then this morning I have started Mina and the Undead by Amy McCaw, and I am 66 pages into it. So I'm still sort of getting into like what's going on in the story. It had a little bit of a slow start for me, but it's just starting to get juicy, and I'm very, very intrigued by how it's going to progress. So I'm very excited for this and I will be reading more of it tonight, obviously. So yeah, this is also another really short one, which I kind of like, I'm baffled by. Um, it's only like 290 something pages. It's about the same length as Gallant, so I should definitely be able to finish this, I think, um, in a couple of days, you know, time permitting. So I've managed to finish my first run of my days at work and I'm off tomorrow to do study. I'm going to attempt to finish my assignment tomorrow and then I'm in Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday next week. Can't wait. So another little update for you as well. I got an Amazon parcel today and I'm pretty sure this is my Camp Spoopathon gift shop gift exchange thing. Spoopy Hole tends to do a lot of gift exchanges on their Patreon um, which are really fun to join in with. Like a, like a secret Santa so we get a, randomly assigned someone who has signed up for it uh, to give a gift to and they will give a gift back to you. Um, so if you would like gift exchanges you should join Spoops' Patreon. Just a little plug for her there. So I'm gonna open this for you and see what I've been given and who has given it to me. Yeah. There are three books in here. I have a feeling I know what trilogy this might be. Yes! Oh my god! Yay! Oh my god! It's the, um, what is the series called? The Kiss Quotient series by Helen Huang, which is one of my favourite series ever. I have been wanting physical copies of these books for ages. I've only been able to read them on my Kindle. Yeah, oh my god. I'm so happy. Who has given this to me? Yes, okay, we do We do have the gift note. So this is from Emily. Okay, I don't know who that is on the Discord, so I'll try and do some working out and thank them, obviously, on Discord. But yes, thank you so much, Emily. I am so pleased to have these, finally. Oh my god. I've been wanting them for so long. Happy to be with fun, they have said. So yeah. Oh my god, yay. Yes, so yeah, this is my favourite romance series ever. Um, I definitely will be rereading them at some point. But yeah, I, I love this series. Um, it's about a autistic main character in each one and the romance is just like really juicy, really 
just makes you swoon and also the smut scenes are really good as well <laughs> so tonight i will be reading some more of mina and the undead and also it is the live show for clockwork prince over on becca's channel so i'm going to go and join that now probably i think it's nearly seven o'clock but yeah i'm very very excited to discuss clockwork prince because i really really enjoyed it and i'm so nervous about clockwork princess Ooh. <laughs> Thursday, day four of Camp Spoopathon. This is more of a rant update than a reading update. Last night I got to page 200 of Mina and the Undead, so I'm really, really enjoying it. It's such a quick read. Yeah, I was very tempted to just sit and finish it in one sitting, so that's what's going on with that. But as for my rant. I finished my assignment this morning and I thought I would spend the afternoon editing a video ready for the weekend because I'm going to be at work and um, so I won't have a lot of time to like work on YouTube um, while I'm at work. And um, last Sunday I filmed my very first plan with me video because it's something I'd like to start doing. Uh, I bought a really nice fancy planner and everything um, for myself and I thought well I may as well like document me using it. Um, because it's, you know, content. <laughs> and I have been sat here for two hours now trying to edit this video because for some reason my phone saved it as a MOV file, a .mov file, which is a significantly larger file than an MP4, which is what my video files are usually saved as. And my video editing software just can't cope with it. I have to like, when I import the files into the, the software, um, I kind of have to wait for it to like, process them basically before I can really start doing anything with them and it's still trying to process this file the raw footage is three gigabytes in size and I'm just so frustrated waiting for it to process in fact if you can hear that that's my laptop really struggling to process this fucking file so yeah I don't know if I'm going to be able to edit this video ready for the weekend I don't know if I'm going to be able to edit it at all because it's not doing anything it's trying to process this file and it's just not doing anything because what I wanted to do was like edit the footage and then record a voiceover and then edit that in and then it's basically ready to go <laughs> just I'm so frustrated oh my god so at this point i don't know if you'll see that video because i can't do anything with it at the moment so i've given up i'm gonna let it process as long as i can i'm gonna do some reading instead while i wait for it to process basically so then i can finish editing it record my voiceover and get it ready to be going up over the weekend yeah i'm just really really mad my space buns are very droopy but whatever. <laughs> Hello, 
so it is now later on, on day four, and I've just finished Mina and the Undead, and I gave it five stars. It was so good. I loved it. Like, it was just so fun and so fast paced. And the last like 50 pages had about, I don't know, so many reveals. And I was just literally like, <gasps> every like page. But it was so good. It was so much fun. And I even finished it on Amy Sprints, which was just like chef's kiss perfect like i'm so glad that i was able to finish it on her sprints and like tell her there and then how much i loved it it was so good it's just like a ya murder mystery about mina who goes to visit her sister in new orleans and people are being murdered and she's basically just trying to work out like what the hell is going on and there's vampires and it was so good it was just so much fun five stars it was great so with this book then i have actually escaped camp spoobathon i've got back to the cabin very safely so i've used it for the prompts tool shared which was to read a book about murder and uh brad oak i think which was to read a thrilling book and also it fulfilled the bonus prompts queer recommended to you and summer setting so yeah i have about 250 points now i think for camp spoobathon this is not the end of my spoobathon journey i am going to end up back at Lake Death and start again and I'm going to follow the other path now as I go. I only anticipate to be able to read one more book this week and so I probably won't make it back to the cabin for a second time but I can give it a good shot. So yeah that is Mina and the Undead. I had a great time with it. So this is what my map for Camp Spoobathon is looking like so far. As you can see, I'm back at the cabin. And then for the other readathons that I'm doing this month, um, I haven't decided what prompt I could use it for, for Aurelium just yet. Um, on my list of prompts for my classes, it doesn't really fit into any of them. So I'm kind of just gonna see if I can stretch it and make it fit into one of them towards the end of the month. And then I've also caught three more fish for Polarthon by reading this book. So I'm now on six fish for the polar bears. We have three more days of the readathon then and I am going back to work tomorrow um, until Monday basically. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, I've managed to get quite a lot of reading done considering I've been at work three or four days this week so far. And considering like I spent most of today trying to edit that video, I did manage to finish it, by the way. You will probably see it on the Saturday of this week. So way before this video will go up. But yeah, I did manage to finally finish editing it. It was so frustrating. It just kept getting stuck. So I had to wait for it to like unstuck. Um, and I just literally couldn't do anything. But I, I managed to finish editing it. So that should hopefully be up already and you will have already seen it. That was all sorted and I spent most of today trying to do that. It literally took me about seven hours to edit that video because it just was not working. So my last book that I plan on reading this week is After Love by Tanya Byrne. I've got it on my Kindle and this is like a romance about a girl who dies um, and becomes a reaper. Uh, and she like wants to be back with her girlfriend. Um, a few other people have been reading it this week for Camp Spoobathon and um, it's been making them cry, <laughs> so I'm a little bit nervous, um, but I'm very excited to to read that. So I might start it tonight, I might start it tomorrow uh, on my way to work, so we'll we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's what's going on. I finished another book. It's the last day of Camp Spoobathon. I have to go to work today as well. Um, we have a big event on, I've probably mentioned it, I don't know if I mentioned what it is. Um, it's called Story Trails. It's like stories about people who are from Wolverhampton and like uses virtual reality and stuff. It's not just in Wolverhampton, it's like across the country. So if there's an event near you, I really recommend going because it's really interesting. But I've been asked to work both days this weekend um, to sort of just be there to support the people who like are doing the event. I don't think I updated you yesterday. I got home, I was exhausted. Um, I have been reading a bit more of After Love. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. The way it's written is really like nice. Like it just flows really nicely. And I nearly started crying on the train yesterday morning when I was reading it because, oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna finish it today. I've got quite a lot left of it, but I can read as much as I can for the last day of Thump's Boobathon. So that's just a quick little update for you now. And I will speak to you again, probably later today when the readathon's over. Hey everybody. So, um, Spoobathon has ended. <laughs> um, it is Tuesday of, of the next week. Um, I meant to sort of wrap up this vlog, let you know how I was getting on with After Love Sunday, but 
I should go to now I was at work I got home and I basically I went to bed at half past nine I was so tired I just like collapsed and then yesterday I was at work again but I'm finally on my week off <laughs> so <laughs> I don't feel as tired anymore wow I've managed to actually get some sleep yeah working eight days in a row was not fun but I finished after the last night so i didn't finish it during spoopathon i might still count it because i read a good like 60 percent during spoopathon so i think i'm just gonna log it anyway if the tracking form's still open and count it for that so after love would have filled the prompts lover's rest because i'd you know gone back into the from the start lovers rest which was to read a deadly romance campfire beta which was to join sprints well i've, I've done that in the week already pixies park read together i read a book with people on sprints and i'm pretty sure other people were reading this book as well during this week oh and ghostly oh yeah you have to start from number two again so yeah it counted for ghostly again as well because um one of the main characters dies well the main character dies uh and then for the bonus prompts uh it's a queer book and it was recommended to me it basically has given me like 150 points so i would have been able to defeat the second killer as well i mean i guess it was thrilling it thrilled me when i was reading it but it was i won't count it for the thrilling prompt because <laughs> i feel like that's cheating but it is a good book to try and like knock off all the prompts on one of the paths that's awesome so yeah uh yeah i finished it last night uh, i was kind of just because i remember my kid i was like lying in bed reading it and i was falling asleep while i was reading it but it, i just was like i just want to finish it and i was like crying softly into my pillow <laughs> because it's so sad but it's so good yeah it's it's just about uh this girl who it's like about first love and sh she meets um someone um and sh they like it's like the start of a relationship and they've they've got all these plans for each other and you know it's like the feeling of first love and what's her name ash she she's like just so excited at the prospects that she's met somebody who like really cares about her and she's just so infatuated with poppy um and then she dies um and it's so tragic it's awful and she she becomes a reaper and she's just kind of like trying to deal with the fact that she's dead and then i won't, I won't say anymore because it will just basically spoil the entire plot of the book but it was really it was beautiful but it was so sad as well there were a few times i nearly just like burst into tears while i was reading it on the train because it was just it was just awful like what has happened and you like it's kind of like in three well yeah in two parts so the first part is before and then the second part is after and because you know what's going to come for ash because it's in the synopsis and there's like a prologue bit as well like you you know what's going to come for her and you spend the whole first half of the book kind of like living in hope but knowing that like what's happening like everything with her and poppy is just not going to last and it was yeah it was just really sad it was just really sad but so beautiful i really really recommend it it was it was just a really beautifully written story i rated it five stars like it was just brilliant i think it's probably a new favorite as well um yeah it really like moved me i think i don't know <laughs> I definitely want to read more from Tanya Byrne in the future because her writing style was what really like kept me going like that was the like her writing style was really good basically I don't know I feel like I'm traumatized by this book <laughs> I'm emotionally traumatized yeah so that that's the end of um Camp Spoopathon um I read a really really great book that has just made me question everything it's the end of the readathon so that means it's the end of the week so yeah here is two of the three books i read during the readathon i had a fantastic time thank you to spoops for organizing everything it was so much fun i just yeah i can't wait for the month-long one in october it's gonna be great <laughs> so this is my week off i am planning to read queen of shadows this week i think so you should get another week-long vlog uh because i'm vlogging myself reading all of the throne of glass books um so i'm planning to read queen of shadows this week expect a spoilery vlog for that because all of them are gonna have spoilers in so yeah i uh, expect that next week 
yay <laughs> but yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please do give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below if you participated in camp spoopathon and what you read did you escape to spoop cabin is that what it was called and escape from the killers let me know if you haven't already and you would like to be please do consider subscribing i try and post a new video every single week and that's it from me today guys so i'll see you soon bye